Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. Welcome to Slamfire Radio, episode 558. Today is June 5th, 2024. I am one of your hosts, Kyle. I'm Adriel. I'm Dave. <laughs> Different Dave. Yeah. Other like Dave. Dave. Other random Dave. Our city Dave, remember? <laughs> Dave with cutoffs and shorty shotguns. Dumpster defenders. <laughs> Tony's saying Dave is hosting and... Tony didn't even host, so you can't make Dave host. I'm not hosting. <laughs> I don't know how to host. I mean, I do, but I don't. <laughs> All right. Well, You're why don't here. we get into uh, what we did with guns? And Dave, why don't you lead us off? What did you do, get up to in guns this week? Uh, oh, dear goodness me. Um, I registered a restricted shotgun, and I have made myself a servo super shorty at home. Um, I'm still waiting for the registration certificate. But when it does show up, I'm going to take this pistol grip, eight and a half inch barrel shotgun with a cylinder bore, and I'm going to take a trap shooting just to see if anybody can have an aneurysm over the age of 80 at the trap shooting range. Because that'll be fun. Um, I finished putting together this thing here. And what I'm holding up as well is a raven. It's the longest raven. It's an A2 stock raven with a full 20 inch barrel. And a two inch long trident flash suppressor making this gun actually it's funny i have a tape measure here for the topic later on how long is those, this ring? those flash hiders are so ringy like every oh, time you fire bing, it's like a tuning Ooh. fork after you fire it okay <laughs> it's one. actually uh 40 and a half inches long <laughs> long boy <laughs> yeah um it is meant to be a, uh, a competition gun. Uh, on, I have a trigger tick in there. It's a two-stage trigger, so I'm probably going to swap it to a proper competition trigger at some point. Uh, I am a sucker for A2 stocks, and uh, I actually had an actual A2 stock with a Canadian fact painted on it, but um, I wanted cuties level points, and so I got myself the Magpul rifle stock. Did you know that Magpul makes a A2 length rifle stock? Just I think plain. that's the first time I've seen that one. I yep. would, I, I'm not surprised that they make one. It's just, I haven't seen one before. Yep. And it's, and it's the perfect length of pull for Dave. And uh, it doesn't come with sling swivel stuff, uh, uh, a, a sling QD cups because Mackle is too cheap for that. So I had to buy those. But uh, check out the storage on this thing. It's cavernous. Now you can stick like two Snickers bars in there. Okay. <laughs> and you should have let me know about the cups. I've, I, I bulk bought them from Brownells for like two bucks a pop. <laughs> they're not magpul ones though so you have to epoxy them in they don't have oh yeah that's the, that. that's, that's the one that i have on uh, on on that uh fixed carbine stock that you got me i still uh, got lots but, yeah I, well I, I'll, maybe i'll just take a couple of your hands now because i gotta put some more of those in my mm -hmm. other stocks um this raven is sporting a faxom socom profile barrel uh, so the socom is it's kind of hard to see under there but it is a Kind of like light to medium profile all the way up to the, the gas block. And then we get this chunky boy at the end. Um, so it's the <laughs> seven point, like, 0. 0.71 diameter uh, barrel after the gas block. Because the gas block is 0. 0.71 diameter. Um, and it's supposed to be like SOCOM wanted a little more weight at the end for more heat retention for longer strings or fire. It, it's dumb because it just makes like the barrel like super front heavy for no reason. Um, that's why I actually order a different barrel from Red Deer Shooting Center. I've got, I've got another fax on coming in. It's an 18 and a half inch barrel with the gunner profile, which is just pencil profile all yeah, the way through. Nice and light. Yeah, yeah. that's the one so, you want. Yeah, so that's that that's gonna take like a half a pound off of the front of the gun. And right now it is just barely a little bit back heavy. So once it's nice and light on the front, this is going to be like super, super light to point. 
Um, I, I am a big fan of the uh, BCM MCMR handguards. I have a 13 inch one, so I got the 15 inch one to match this. Um, there is a uh, ergo adjustable gas block under here so that I can fine tune the gas system. And this thing shoots really nice now, especially because it's a rifle length uh, gas system with the rifle stock and spring and everything. So it's it's just like boom and everything just kind of goes woo and then it slams all the way forward. Um, this was a gold builder kit that I purchased from uh, Calgary Shooting Center. Shout out to Max. Uh, he'll hook you up. Uh, I also got the platinum upgrade kit, which just gives me all the controls that the gold doesn't come with. And honestly, it's it, it's worth it. It's the gun is purpose built for those controls there. So it's got some really nice ambi mag releases in there. It's got some really nice um, bolt catch on one side and on the other. So it you can just reach and push, and it's good to go. Um, the trigger tech didn't have any issues coming in, uh, getting in there. The sequence precision, forty five degree safety, didn't have any issues in there. How's the only pattern on it? Is it is it like close to your face, far from your face? Um, I think it flies over my shoulder, so I would say it's probably like a four o'clock throw. Okay. Yeah. It, there's yeah, a to... there's a three D printed shell deflector you can get. I uh, I I've, I have the file for that, and um, then I saw a guy in Gun Post is getting aluminum machine ones made in China, so I got Ooh. that coming in the way. Uh huh. Yeah, and it also has the cover here for the other side to seal up this end. And I was gonna say the only complaint that I truly have about this gun is this freaking charging handle. Because apparently the guy didn't trust claw, so he just put a freaking piece of bent spring in there to hold the charging handle in. And it is kind of hard to see, but it is already wearing on there. Yep. They have Gen so, two. Yeah, how much is the Gen 2 charging handle? Too much. There's a guy on gun post that's making a bunch in China too for cheaper. That's the same guy that I bought them from. So I bought yeah. the I bought his entire assembly. So I've got the cover on the side. I've got wizard, the shell deflector. Wizard defense, something like that. Uh, wizard, Def wizard defense, yeah. So I've got that coming. Oh, yeah. Um, and then um, BCM grip. What else do I have on here? This guy. So initially I had a primary arms 5x prism scope on there and it was really nice it was, it was really 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 nice but i have a match this weekend and i need something as a backup and this is going to be the backup i needed something for a backup to this brand two okay mm. i'm gonna run the brand two because i know this is reliable i already ran it in a match and uh it's just it's it's cool. It's a 16 inch brand, um, and I really like it. Like all the controls are right for me. Uh, it it just shoots so well. Um, I know it runs, and uh, yeah, the Raven. Even though I put it together myself, and I know I can put together something better than Lockhart Tactical because I know what a torque wrench is. Um, I I don't want to put something that I, I just put together into a match. I'd rather just run the brand. But if for some reason the brand dies, I'll have a I'll have another semi-auto with a dot. Um, Dave, depending on when my register for that Raven comes in, I might get twenty. I might I might be able to sight it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go. If you can do it, do it. You should do it. Uh -huh. You should run that Raven. That thing is pretty dope. I will um, because it'll be more reliable than the other options I have. <laughs> oh right, because your other one is <laughs> how many how many pistons have you broken on your links? Uh, well, two in the last, you know, couple months here. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's wild. I feel like the last um, one didn't have a good heat treat on it, though, because it bent, like, right away. Oh, that's, that's, that's just classic Kodiak at this point. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, well, I, I, I said that I went to a match. I went to a match. I shot my first Ipsic style, but not Ipsic adherent match. It was a rifle match that they did at BTSA. Um... And I didn't win. I didn't DQ. But I did get the most alphas of the entire match. <laughs> I was really slow. 
but <laughs> I got the most out of this. <laughs> I wasn't saying anything. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, my, 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 my proudest moment in that entire match happened twice because there were two stages, one which was maybe like a 50-meter stage, um, and everybody was struggling with it. Not yet, Rico. So Rico's asking about the charging handle blowing backwards when you shoot the Raven. I haven't, but I've seen the videos of people having that issue. So yeah, I anticipate too. that once that section on the upper wears enough, it's going to start happening. Um, so that's why your, I, your firing I'm pin is. Uh, oh, no, your firing pin will be a Raven firing pin. Yeah, it has to be. Nah, mine yeah. hasn't broken. Yeah. No. Like I said. I, I, I put together that gun and it's like 90% AR, but it's the 10% in the middle that worries me. Um, yeah. So that's why I'm running the brand. Where was I? Yeah. Okay. So the match, 50 meter stage, and everybody's struggling to make those hits at the 50 meters. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm taking my time. And Adriel knows what I mean. I, I just mosey around the stage. I don't run. I hate running. It makes me sweaty. So I just walk. I walk the stage. Saunter. I sat down. And, I saunter. Yeah. A casual saunter. And I sat down, I made my hits, alphas, 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 alphas. And then the uh, RO for that stage after the fact came to me and he said, no one, no one else has hit alphas in this stage. No one. I was like, I'm, I'm just, I just took my time, you know, I'm, I'm just running with this enormous, um, Aimpoint Pro, and what is this? Is this a two MOA dot or is it three MOA? Andrew, what is this thing? It's one or two. It's three, three. No, it's two. not that much, is it? I, don't I think know. it's a two. Somebody will, somebody will find out. I think there's actually two models, models, so I don't know. Anyway, so I'm, I'm just running it with a dot, right? But I take my time and I maple seed it. I maple seed it so hard all over that stage, um, and then I did it again for another stage that was the long range stage with 200 meter steel. 100 meter uh, paper targets and then a bunch of targets out the front. And the whole gimmick of that stage was that everybody everybody shot the, 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 the close range stuff after they shot the long range off of a fake roof barricade. So it was just a, you know, a sheet of plywood with some beams across to simulate a roof. And everybody was climbing on and like messing around, trying to like put their hands on and getting a, you know, bracing against the roof and whatever. And I tried it. I, I, at the, before I did my, the, the stage, I just climbed onto the roof, lay down and I went, nope, I hate this. This sucks. So I turned to the RO and I asked him, can I just like lay down prone and shoot it off the ground beside the barricade? And he just looks at me like I just grew a third eyeball in the middle of my forehead. And yeah, I mean, nobody else has done it, but go for it if you want. So I shot my close range stuff because people were saying it's like, oh, yeah, if you shoot the close range stuff, then your heart rate will be up. Remember, I don't run. So my heart rate was not up. So I just shot the close range stuff. Then I lay down and I maple seated. Every single one of those five steel targets at 100 at 200 meters, just like bang, bang. Oh, I have to adjust, scoot over, get my natural, you know, point of aim back on target. <sighs> bang, <laughs> just bang, 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 bang. And it's really funny because I got footage of me shooting that stage, and the RO couldn't care less about what I was doing except being safe, right? But when I started shooting the steel, First shot, ding, dead on. Second shot after a pause, ding, dead on. Then I see him turn around and look at me. Third shot, ding, dead on. And like looks back at the camera. Fourth shot, ding. And then looks back to me. Five shot, ding. And he's like, well, that's that. He's finished. <laughs> he thought I was done. Then I moved on to the 100 meter targets and I got alphas again, all alphas. And so, yeah, that was, that was what I did for that match. I have a three gun match this Saturday here at Milo. Uh, I'm going to be running the Brennus primary one rifle, the Raven as secondary rifle, the uh, Beretta 1301 Tactical Marine as primary shotgun, the Versamax Tacord Special as secondary shotgun, a Shadow 2 with a red dot on it as primary handgun, and a Jericho 941R with Cowboy Bebop grips as my secondary handgun. Because... 
I have 40 cal mags now. Kids, why do 40 cal mags matter? 40 why? cal doesn't. Why? But 40 cal <laughs> mags are nice. The mags are nice. The mags are super nice. The mags are super nice and they work in 9mm handguns. Uh, wait, do, they, do, we, do we know this? Do we know this or not? Well, I'm going to say that they do. Yeah. No, we've talked about it before. Yeah, yeah. the Mechgar, the Mechgar 40, cal, 40 cal mags work in 9mm for shadows. Yeah. But which specific brand, Adriel? Which specific model of magazine? Mechgar, the full steel ones. It has to be Mechgar, the full steel ones that have a blue follower. And what do they say on the side, Adriel? <clears throat> I don't know, 40? 40 and made in Italy. one SP01. Yeah. It has to be the blue follower, uh, full yeah. steel, 40 cal, SP01 shadow mags. And those ones work well. Because I've tried other 40 mags, like CZ75 mags. Those ones didn't work. But this one, this one does. And guess what? Cabela's has them. So next time they go on sale, buy a bunch. Uh, yeah. Use the affiliate link. Oh, look at that. A plug. I'm done. Next. <laughs> Kyle, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, baseball's just wrapped up, so been kind of taking it easy, relaxing before I get going. But uh, I have started getting out for some runs, so I got a little bit of an update on the Axle X-Core Ear Pro. Mm -hmm. And I'm impressed. Both on the sound, the bass response on them is pretty damn good. And like running, they you don't even know they're there. There's no movement whatsoever. They don't feel like they're sticking way out of your head. I am really happy with them so far. So, hmm. and I just actually got an email. They're like a hundred dollars off right now. So not quite the deal I got when I bought them, but it seems like Axel is always putting deals on that stuff. But those soon. are in ear, right? Yes, they are in ear yeah. without the cord in between them, and so you put them in, and it locks into your like your ear canal here. That's pretty and, swanky. Uh, it's got the charging case. So, but but yeah, like, like I said, with the run. Very impressed. I mean, I haven't been doing jumping jacks or obstacle course, but going out for a couple mile run, trying to do some speed trials. And yeah, they didn't move. I didn't feel like I had to readjust them all the time. So but that, I'm trying to break down, well, start doing some running in that cause, because, and I got to get my training schedule figured out. Because yeah, I got to start getting to the range some more ramp up my dry fire, get my dry fire going. And yeah, because time is creeping up and I got to get ready for local match, local pistol match next weekend here. And then end of the month, a uh, three gun match at the end here. So, so a couple matches coming up and yeah, I got to ramp up my training because yeah, now I should have some more time to do that. So cool. what you're saying is you don't saunter around. You actually, you actually run. Oh, I do actually run, yes, and I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to get myself so I can do it more efficiently. Mm. <laughs> yes, but I, I see. I do like running around a stage. I find that extremely fun. So, I like going fast too. Yeah, Got shoot fast, run fast. <laughs> Got to go fast. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So that's pretty much it for me this week. How about you, Adriel? Uh, I just got off a double header pal R pal over the last weekend here. So that was my, that was my weekend spent. Was that your first camped out at the range while I was doing it? Yeah. Yeah. First R pal. It was good. It was easy. Nice. I don't like revolvers. I don't, I don't <laughs> want so much revolver focus in there. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me you, we, 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 we shouldn't be teaching people about single action revolvers that have been outdated for, 140 years i mean we teach people about match locks but i think for the practical it would be more practical if we had a single action semi-auto and a dasa semi-auto i think i that would, would say right. skip the single action and just have a hammer fire semi-auto and a striker fire semi-auto 
yeah that actually that would be good because there's lots of people out there who get like a yeah yeah exactly striker fire uh handgun and a hammer fired that would be great that's all you'd need to do uh, i would still keep the revolver because there's a couple of companies that still have revolvers so there are but it's just like would that be someone's first handgun with it how many i wonder how many revolvers get sold versus semi-automatic handguns i bet you it's like 10 percent, maybe less maybe less okay but 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 for the same valley that we still we, we still have like well, actually i was going to use lever actions but lever actions are not popular and cool again um just the revolver is is ubiquitous enough that it needs to be out there just as a basic knowledge base so i think the, the revolver the, the double action especially yeah, because the double uh, action getting, yeah yeah getting the the cylinder open and that kind of thing even though i don't have any because i think they're dumb but uh and i have you a mean single to tell action. me revolvers are like the katana of the gun world <laughs> yeah i think they're <laughs> potentially worse <laughs> <laughs> hey now hey now yeah uh Rico is saying, hey, speaking of CRFC SC instructors entire, they're unable to purchase new handguns, no exemption. You have huh. that issue in Alberta? Yes. Yep. I would like to purchase some handguns so I could use them for the restricted course, and I cannot. Yep. But you know who can? Tristan, because he's got a business license. So he just has handguns coming to him all the time. And same thing happens mm. with the CSC. Max, my guy at the CSC, is like, Yeah, I've, yeah. I've got I had like another seven handguns came in last week. And well, if uh, someone dies, uh, what do you do with the handguns? They sell them to, to a business, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, because you but, can't, no one can inherit them. But because the market is zero for them, like they're just giving them like 50 bucks, like, like, because, oh. like, what, oh. what are they gonna do? They, they're running out of space to put these things, so what are they gonna do with them? Like they're they're hmm. they're trying to like think about how they can loan them out or something, but they can't. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, uh yeah. So I did pal our pal over the weekend. I camped at the range just because I didn't want to drive back and forth and back and forth and that kind of thing. So I just uh just stayed out there, made it easier, right? Got to sleep in a little bit more, kind of. The ducks and geese like at 3 a.m it's like it's dark and they went nuts the ducks and geese just went nuts at 3 a.m so i was like oh my god what's going on and then around six they were quiet so uh next weekend i've got a maple seed in peace river alberta so if you're in the peace area i'll be up there uh maple seeding i think i'm going to drive up friday night camp at the range like car camp at the range do the maple seed and then drive back all in one day it's just Oh yeah, it'll be long. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. Why can't I picture where Peas River is? Where's Peas River? North. It's north. It's very far north. You can't picture like, it because two you would hours never north of Grand Prairie. There's land up there. Ooh, that's a drive from Edmonton, even. Yep. Which is Actually, why I'm doing the drive the day before. Probably wouldn't. Not a bad day. So how far is Adriel? That's got to be not Bye-bye. much different than yeah. It's no different than Grand Prairie for you. No, eh, no different. Peace River is five hours. Grand Prairie is five hours. Oof. That's an oof. Uh huh. Well, actually, no. Four hours, forty minutes to Peace River. How much to Grand Prairie? Probably about the same. It's about the same. Yeah. From my house, four hours and twenty minutes to Grand Prairie. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Same, same. Yeah. So, but I'm trying to cover like I'm trying to give good coverage to most of the province, right? And uh, Peace River and Grand Prairie are kind of out there, but it's hard to get to. And they sure. got a bunch of people signed up, so I'm I'm heading out. Yeah, Peace River is a nice match or a nice uh, range. Yep. Yeah, I did the team match out there last year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it should be good. Um, I don't know. I think that's it for me. I, I, I made some more reloads, some more dummies for uh, PAL courses, uh, some more interesting ones. So I made like oh, a. Oh, 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 sorry to yeah. interrupt you. Uh, Calgary Shooting Center has 12 gauge dummies, they have Fioki dummies. Okay. Nice. It's step, Are they the steel it's, ones it's, or the plastic? It's it's the real deal. It's the same things that we used to have from Brownells. That same yep. box, uh, oh, cool. except it's ten dollars a box of. Let me know. Ten, 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 ten for a twenty-five. I think. Ten bucks ten, for twenty-five. That's yeah. pretty. That's really good for dummy rounds. All the deal. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, let me just pull really it out. Good for dummy rounds. I remember I, was, I, was, I scoffed at the pr at the price, but it may not be that bad then. Dummy rounds end up being stupid expensive. Yeah, twenty five. Yep, yeah. yeah, I have a I have a ton of I have a ton of those, but good to know. Ten bucks. Twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks per box of twenty five. That's still all right. Yeah, fucker. That's yeah. still a good price for dummy rounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna pick up probably a couple of more boxes. I got I've got more coming in. Oh, I forgot to talk about that. But yeah, I've got more coming in from Brownells. But yeah, I have to no double more. check on what I paid from Amazon for my last shipment of dummy rounds to see how that compares. Yeah. Anyways, that's it for me. Mine's okay. easy. Uh, well, we'll get on to upcoming events, and we will start off with the three gun events coming up. So, on this weekend, June seventh, eighth, is the Canadian Multi Gun Series in Guelph, Ontario, at the Guelph Run Gun Club. And then on June 9th, on Sunday, CDTSA has a three gun match. That's in Milo, Alberta. That's June fifteenth, as Sherwood Park Fish and Game is having their multi gun team match. Uh, that's a two day event. June fifteenth and sixteenth. On June 22nd, Mighty Peace 3-Gun, that's at that Peace River range, is having a 3-Gun match. And then on July 6th, Chaz is having a their July 3-Gun match. All of those, except for Mighty Peace 3-Gun, is on practice score, so you can go and search them up. Mighty Peace 3-Gun, just show up, and before, show up, be at the range before 9 o'clock, and you'll be able to shoot. And then moving on, uh, Maple Seeds. Any notable Maple Seeds coming yeah, I've up got there? Some, well, this very famous one in Peace River. There's going to be some pretty interesting people there. <laughs> well, it's Peace River. Of course there are. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be June 8th. Uh, there's still spots available. Actually, there was someone on the uh, Peace River Facebook page that was trying to sell his spots. So uh, buy his spots because those will be cheaper. He's, he's selling them at a discount. Uh, Kananaskis also on June 8th. That's sold out. Uh, Cannon ask us on June 9th. I believe there's still spots. CFB Borden, uh, Rimfire only. That's the Maple Seed. That's going to be June 8th. Qualify your Rifleman, and you've got a chance to do the first known distance. That's going to be the day after. Known distance uh, Maple Seed is full caliber, or you can use your 22 if you feel like losing and being frustrated. <laughs> but you know how we shoot 100, 200, 300, 400 meter like targets with stage one, two, three, and four in the MQT. Uh -huh. Imagine all the targets are just this big and they're at 100, 200, 300, and 400 meters. And you shoot your two, two, three, or three, eight, this? or whatever. It's CFB Borden in Ontario, June 9th, this weekend. Oh, never mind. <laughs> we'll do it, we'll do it in Alberta. <laughs> uh, the, the first question yeah. I got from someone is like, hey, when, when's Alberta doing this? I'm like, those are the guys in Ontario, they're going to figure it out and then we'll take that and we'll apply it out here. It's a long How day, much? though. So you need 100, 200, 300, and 400? Well, meters. it would be cool to shoot yeah. it at distance instead of simulated distance. Yeah. Yeah. So your, your stage one standing, that's a standing target at 100 meters. Your stage I two. Wonder, mm -hmm. I wonder if we could get full bore here in, in Calgary to do that because they got the 800 meter range. Yeah. So there's a bunch of yeah. ranges in Alberta that could do that, too. Yeah. But then the so in Ontario at, at CFB Borden they have a butts system and they're going to back off of it so that it makes it easy to swap targets and that kind of thing. You need an, a way to swap targets or else you need a couple of guys on quads or side by sides or something to like go down range because otherwise, oh yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a chore, right? Although I suppose if you had access to a range that had berms at one, two, three, and four, you could do the whole MQT, yeah, in a rapid fire four minutes now that would be interesting that would get hot oh, thanks. that would get hot. Round. A... how many rounds it's, is only four, it's only 40 rounds that's it, oh, it that's your rifle's bad. gonna be hot your rifle's gonna be hot after 40 rounds for sure you probably want to do the bottom ones first <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah yeah you guys i guess you could i guess you could that'd be fun hmm. that would be fun and rounds per stage you could do uh two coupled mags Two coupled lar mags, and do it in four minutes. It's totally doable. I mm, what scope would I use for that? Something that's got some uh, subtensions, uh, yeah. ladder subtensions, yeah, so that you don't have to adjust in between. You just probably, want to be able to. It, 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 
Prism 5, but it's got really chunky lines on it. So mm. that wouldn't be good. Other maple seeds. So anyways, that's coming up. Uh, you have to have your rifleman patch to shoot the known distance. And it's not just shooting the known distance. There is some instruction that's going to happen in there as part of like uh, building dope for your... You're going to want rifle dope for it. You're not going to want to do it at... Like, I know they're going to go through that kind of thing. But if you show up with a rifle that's not zeroed with no dope, you're screwed. You're you're, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, sporting rifle is... Give me a little bit more information. Borden is a gallery range, and they will have people in the butts to mark the targets. Uh, yeah. In the butt. Uh, <laughs> Kananaskis will be June 9th. I already mentioned that. Armstrong, June 9th. That one's already sold out. Elmira, Rod and Gud Club, Ontario, also June 9th, also sold out. Uh, Broken Head, River Game and Fish in Manitoba, June 16th. There's spots available for that. So if you're in Manitoba, that's your maple seed you got to get to. PEI Big Boot Gun Club. You got to go just for the name, I think. Yeah. Uh, they've got that on June 22nd, and they've got a ladies only on June 23rd. I think the ladies only is going to be sold out before the other one. And Blue Ridge, Ontario, uh, June 29th. That's coming soon, unless the range sells out to its members. And Saskatchewan, uh, the Regina Fish and Game League, uh, that'll be June 30th. That's also coming soon. And if you want to see me uh, not in the north of Alberta, but in the center of Alberta, come on down to Red Deer July 6th for the Red Deer, that's Blindman Valley, Maple Seed. I'll be there. Cool. Uh, he goes asking, isn't there a Maple Seed at Cornwall Handgun Club in August? Uh, maybe, maybe. But that's in August. I'm only reading the first 30 days. Yeah. Go to go, for the full <laughs> list of events, go to mapleseedrifleman.com slash events and you can see all the events. There's a bunch Ontario's adding a whole bunch right now. They've been uh they've been busy. There's uh uh L T V F G, that's Frankfurt. Uh they have Blue Ridge, as I mentioned. They have G B H A Midland, H H G G C Peta Penetanguishine, uh Cornwall. Lady Seed at Blue Ridge. Yeah, they got a whole bunch that they're adding on there. Cool. Cape Nova, Nova Rifle. Oh, there's one in Nova Scotia coming in the end of October, too. Cool. Right on. All right. Uh, there is a 1,000-yard steel challenge at CFB Borden on June 22nd. It is listed on practice score under 1,000-yard steel challenge, RCMI. Uh, Chaz cool. is having a family day, family range day, on June 22nd as well. That and... means, like, show up and they'll let you, like pay for some tickets and they'll let yeah, you, you guys do guns. like set up a few different stages with different disciplines and everything right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and like kids shoot 22 for free and uh yeah it's just gonna be a good stuff so if, if you want to even just check out the range that's the time to do it because they'll be you'll be checking out the range and shooting and doing a bunch of different things out there nice so that's fun uh jazz battle of alberta registration opens june 7th match on september 7th and 8th so on friday registration opens uh, mm -hmm. What time does that open at? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. I think. That is... September? Yeah, the match in is September. September yeah. 7th and 8th. You should that, try to get up here for that one, Dave. That is that a really a good big match. One. That's pretty much become the must-attend three-gun match. And besides the Peace River team match, for a solo competitor, the three-gun match to go to. I, I would love it, but I have a match on the 8th, and I'm teaching on the 7th. <laughs> ah, boo -earns. Yeah. Uh Also at Chaz, Cowboy Action Showdown in the Valley, June 15th and 16th. You can email cowboy at historical-arms.com for more info. Didn't realize you guys had Cowboy Action at Chaz. You know what? He just emailed me. He's like, hey, can you guys promote this match? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> you should be promoting guys' stuff. <laughs> Oops. No, it's uh, all yeah. So it's uh yeah yeah we have a we have an active cowboy uh, action uh, club. Why don't Actually, you guys the have the little day. shanty town built then? Uh, I believe they build that because they have some of those stuff. But like the shanty they, they, town oh, is put just it up look, before that's every match. Ambiance. That's for ambiance, right? Yeah. You don't need that. You just need a table. Yeah, but it, you set that up permanently. All the other disciplines get to use it too, and it, it's a cool backdrop and something cool to use in your stage yeah they haven't built right. anything like that maybe maybe when we build like another leo bay or something like that yeah <laughs> uh our last event uh hunting gear hgg firearms training has some spots open for july 20th for the pal and 21st for the r pal at sherwood park fishing game association so 
If you missed that, that is Adriel. He's got some spots open for a pal course. <laughs> David, do you have hey, any? If he can say, can I say mine? <laughs> Why not? Uh, June 22nd and 23rd, Calgary. June 24th, 25th, 26th, Cochrane. July 20th, 21st, Calgary. 22nd, 23rd, 24th, Cochrane. And then my August, September, and October dates were just released. So if you want to register five months ahead of time, you can. Cool. Cool. All right, that is it for upcoming events. We'll get on to the news. And the only piece I see here is that you now need a pal to transport a mag that has officially gone through. Excuse me? What? That was part yep. of that C21, and they... That's that's what the CCFR was saying. Yeah, you need a pal now. To transport? To be in possession of a magazine. Uh, okay, so what do we have so far? Uh, barrels? Just everything. Just yeah, everything. It's just everything, just, yeah. Yeah, everything you need a pal. That's, that's the long and short of it. Yeah. I thought you just need it for buying. Oh, C twenty one changed all that. No they ammo, ammo you could have before you just couldn't buy, but now you can, you can't give I thought, ammo. I you could, no, I I thought you couldn't no, possess okay, ammo. Okay. You couldn't possess uh, ammo before. I guess do I have to go they to could. the CCFR page to see all this? Now you can't, anyways. Now you need a pal for everything: yeah. parts, ammo, AK forty sevens. They're knocking, they're ratcheting it all down. Yeah. <laughs> so worse. So. Yeah. Hey, I have a story about parts. <laughs> okay. Should I? So, okay. So uh, in February, is it going to get anyone in trouble? <laughs> no, no, because I, I, I've got the permit. It's all going through. It only took four months. Uh, in February, I made a Brownells order, and Brownells is this lovely little slider that lets you see parts available outside the U.S. So I, I clicked on that, and then I ordered a 16-inch. 300 blackout barrel, uh, bolt for an AR-15, a gas tube, a flash hider, and three boxes of dummies. It gets out of the U.S. and into Canada, and the CVSA holds on to it. Mm -hmm. Guess what the CVSA has a problem with? The dummies? Nope. Not the flash hider, not the dummies. The gas tube the bolt, and the barrel. Took them weeks to figure out what to do here because I finally found an email to say, hey, you've had this for weeks now. What are you doing? And they go, oh, Global Affairs is inspecting the or the package to determine if an import permit is required. We will let you know. They did require an import permit. So then begins the fun of me trying to obtain an import permit. They send me a link to the page where you can apply in the global affairs to find out how to get a permit. But it doesn't say how to get a permit. It just says how to apply. So there's a bunch of tabs, and I have no idea what any of those do. Finally, I have a light bulb moment, and I realized that Prophet River in Lloyd, I think they're in Lloyd Ministry, I can't remember. Uh, yep. Prophet River uh, has imported stuff for me, so I shot them an email and said, hey, can you apply for the import permit? Because they're going to seize my stuff in a month if I don't provide one. Uh, they're like, yeah, we'll, we can do that. So they did. Um, the deadline is coming up. And so I emailed them. I was like, hey, what's happening? It's like, we're just waiting for them to get back to us. So I sent an email to the CBSA saying, can you extend this? Because I'm waiting on the permit. And they're like, sure. It's extended from May 9th for a month. And if you know what the date is today is June Fifth, and yesterday I was sweating when I remember that June 9th is when they finally take it all away. And I emailed and I got the permit. Prophet River came in clutch, and now the package is on the way. And I am going to assemble the long boy version of what Adriel was showing there earlier that straight pole guy. It's going to have a 16 inch mm. 300 blackout barrel, and I'm going to shoot a deer with it, just like Adriel is. But I'm going to have way better ballistics. <laughs> Your ballistics are going to be barely better than mine. 300 blackout's already pretty cooking at <laughs> a short barrel. That's why I chose 300 blackout. It's good with yeah. a short barrel. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but mine is good. <laughs> gooder. It will be yeah. gooder. Mine doesn't have a lot of blast to it. There, there wasn't a big fireball or anything like that out of it. Even yeah. with full well, send. Like, 
rounds. I mean, they have those fast bur burning powder, so it's going to get burnt out by the time it gets to any. I'm using little, little gun in mine, which I think is pretty. Oh, fast. oh, you're rolling your own. That's the way to go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so my yeah, desert so tech lower should be months. here soon. Your what attack? My desert tech quattro fifteen lower. It should be here soon. Mm -hmm. And then nice. actually, I think I'm gonna buy a AR ten lower at the same time, so I can get the three hundred eight going for deer <laughs> hunting. Do it. Yep, I agree. But let's uh, let's get on to new gun stuff. New Gun Stuff is brought to you by Bullseye North. Need a new boomstick? Bullseye North is Canada's shooting superstore and a proud supporter of the CCFR. With a wide selection of guns and top trending gear for any shooter. They have free shipping over $250 and some exclusions do apply. And they also have $17 flat rate shipping for orders below $250. You can sub subscribe eh, to their newsletter to get first access to the hottest deals. And Adriel has some... Oh, they got a couple right things now. up here. Yeah, they have the Mossberg 88, uh, 18 and a half inch barrel with the regular stock or the pistol grip stock. Both will be non-restricted. That one's 323. They have the 590 Shockwave if you prefer the uh, the true dumpster dive, uh, dumpster defender. That's got the strap on the pump and it is 559. And then they have their 940 Pro Tactical if you like your guns to fall apart and for parts to break <laughs> on them while you're trying to shoot three gun. They've got one of those. Cool. 1249 you're almost all the way there to a bread of uh bread of 1301 which won't blow parts out of it and they have a mossberg 500 retro pump shotgun oh the price is coming down on those nice 599 it's got wood stock on it it looks great walnut appropriate uh field and deer combo 20 gauge oh look at that pump action so it comes with two barrels one of those barrels is rifled with iron sights on it so you can shoot deer with a proper Sabo slug. Mm -hmm. uh, next thing, FOC has their dusty inventory sale. There's some good deals in this thing. So if you're local to FOC, you're going to want to check out their sales and clearance. They had some ammo for killer price. I don't even know if they're going to have it. Well, that's I, I'm gonna good. Tell you, I'm going to tell you which one's a good one. They have Federal Gold Mill Match 6.5 Creedmoor for $39.99. Uh-huh. They have Federal Fusion for twenty nine bucks. Uh, Hornady Vintage Match eight mil Mauser for thirty nine bucks. That's pretty good. Mm. Oh, there's a Federal six five. Premium six five Creedmoor thirty nine dollars. Oh, I think they sold out a lot of their killer priced ammo. Well, this is not bad. Nosler Ammunition two seventy Winchester thirty four dollars a box. That's pretty good. We got some guns in there too. I'm just not sure if they're good. Oh, there we go. Seven by fifty-seven, seven mil Mauser, twenty-four ninety-five a box. If you want seven mil Mauser, that is the cheapest you're going to find it anywhere. Seven six five by fifty-three Argentine, box of twenty for twenty-nine ninety-five. Ridiculous. What? Yeah. Wow. Three seventy-five H and H for sixty bucks. That sounds like a lot, but it's not. <laughs> not for H and H. No. <laughs> no. Uh, they got some other guns here. I want to see if they has they have that ammo. No, I think they must have sold out a lot of it. Oh wait, wait. X tap for fifteen. What's There's the yeah, federal gold medal match six five Creedmoor one thirty grain burger bullet forty dollars. That's pretty good. Gecko, they got Gecko nine millimeter three thirty nine for a case of a thousand. PMC X tac ah, that you can get at a better price six ninety nine is all right. Seven hundred bucks for a thousand. That's not bad. No, like if, no, if, if you're local. Bad. Yeah, if you're local, that's gonna be good. I got a better. Well, Dave, you got it. You found a better price than that. Oh, right. I forgot we bought that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dave, let me know about a guy who's selling two thousand rounds. I'm like two thousand for you, thousand for me. So and pick it up <laughs> from him. Cool. Anyways, yeah. Though there's some there's some killer deals in ammo in there. I forgot we bought that ammo. <laughs> oh, by Hopefully, the way, didn't buy more. Yeah, I forgot your shotgun is already in Edmonton. My mom has it, so you can pick it up. All right. Your mom, the gun runner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Inner Surplus got a new shipment of uh, Swedish rifles and shotguns in. So if you're looking for an M96 and 30 odd six, 250, hmm. Dave, you need a new bolt action PAL rifle, 250 for a 30 odd six. You can get 30 odd six, damn uh, dummies. Huh. 250 bucks condition eh it's a rifle 
So how easy is it to pull the firing pin? Uh, you got to grind it. You can't pull on the mousers. Ah, okay. That's oh, really? Fine. Yeah. Yeah, they're, 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 the, 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 the head and the, and the spring are... The safety and all that kind of stuff. Or, yeah. By the, the, firing, by the firing pin. Yeah. Yeah, the because firing pin is spring is, is acting yeah. against the, the safety. So you got to grind oh, the firing pin to... Okay. But this one's got... What kind of safety is that? Well, it's that got the wing safety. safety. No, is that a wing. side safety? Looks like a side safety. I don't know what that is. Uh, no, there's no side safety there. No, there can't be. It's just something I else. Think it's just, I think that was just like the, the, the clear rods that they used to hold the gun up. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's a hanger. Yeah, yeah. Anywho, still cheap. That's Here's tempting. one that'll excite you. The Lask has, uh, in again, 8-inch, 1022 barrels, fluted or non-fluted, 139 for non-fluted, 169 for fluted, 179 for stepped and fluted. One of those is already sold out. The fluted version was sold out. The non-fluted and stepped and fluted are still in stock. You know what I kind of want to build because I'm a verifier? I want to build an ST22 that's this big with a folding stock. <laughs> you could you and could. run it for steel challenge because like just imagine like chuk chuk 597 oh, yeah. max ready done ready i don't even have to reload <laughs> yeah nice and short uh tony let let me know about these caldwell emacs okay this is a cheap set of head headphones but this one's bluetooth this is the oh. pro with Bluetooth and it's fifty nine ninety eight, So 60 bucks. Not bad. And you get yourself emuffs that are. Oh, that, 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 that extra safe for 10%. If you use it on pick up on store, I use that today. I got six, five for buck 90 a shot. Ah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And yeah, oh, you should tell them tomorrow. Father's day sale stars, the Cabela's 10% off gift cards. You can buy five for $500 each. You can get $2,500 oh. worth of buying power. For 2250 2, Can you get that registered as a TFSA when you when you invest that much in Cabello's gift cards? Can you get those, those gift yeah, cards that would registered be nice. under your investment account? I, I, I only <laughs> shop at Cabela's twice a year. I buy the gift cards here and I buy the gift cards on Boxing Day and I spend five grand at Cabela's every year. That's it. Might as well. You're going to save that much. Yep. Cool. Yep. I'll have to look for that. The last one, Lockhart Raven, their their tactical 22 LR is now available. This is the Bolt Carrier Group only, three ninety nine. Hmm. Huh. They have twenty five round mags and they have fifty round drum mags as well. The twenty five rounders are fifty five bucks. The fifty rounders are one hundred fifty nine. That is an expensive bolt carrier. Did you okay, know that that guy check. actually machines everything in house? Yeah. Oh uh-huh. yeah, no, no, for sure, yeah. But yeah. where like find another 22LR bolt carrier for an AR that No, no, no. Yeah. All I'm saying is like like this entire thing, like everything here, he makes. The catch, the pins, everything. It's all in house. You think the charging handle's in house or you think he just shops that out? That the charging handle would be too easy to give someone else to shop to no, do. It'd no, be too no, hard no, to create. My guy at the CSC keeps trying to talk sense into him. Like, like maybe try this, maybe try that. He's like, no, no, no. I got to keep an eye on everything. He does everything in house. It's, hmm. it's, it's, it's insanity. Sounds yeah, you guys start farming some of that stuff out. Yeah. Anyways, right. I got to run. Catch you guys later. Right. Good later, Dave. Thanks for having me. Right. Thanks for coming on. All right, and on to the main topic. And for our main topic, we thought we'd get David on from Foothills Firearms Training down in Calgary uh, to tell us about res- registering restricted firearms because there's a little bit of a process to it, and uh, I think some people out there might want to do it if they knew more about the process. Welcome to the yeah. show, Dave. Uh, thank you for having me again. Um, it's a process. It is one of the processes of the world, and so... <laughs> It's a process. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, 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 yeah. Uh, y- you want a restricted firearm? Guess what, kids? You can still get restricted firearms in Canada. Yes, the handguns are out, but there are other things out there. So, does anybody off the top of their head know what is not a handgun, but that is still restricted? Let's start with that. That thing up there. 
Mm-hmm. Wait. Okay. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, that, that one. one. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Not not what this else? one. Just that one. Not that one. That one? Yeah. Uh-huh. But why? Well, I'm pointing oh, okay. at a 16-inch barrel Raven. Yes. And 16 inch 16 barrel inches. Raven. But but it's but Adriel, automatic. why is yours restricted but this 20 inch barrel raven is not restricted because barrel length because barrel length so mm -hmm. as i review which are restricted firearms in canada all handguns are restricted that's just what it is we're not talking about antiques because they're not considered firearms i don't know it's weird okay um and any semi-automatic firearm that uses center fire ammunition and has a barrel length less than 18 and a half inches okay that's your Raven, Adriel. Then the next one is a little more complex because it's a firearm that is designed or adapted to be fired when reduced to the length of less than 660 millimeters, 26 inches by folding telescoping or otherwise. What does that mess mean? If you have a gun that is more than 26 inches and you can make it to be less than 26 inches and it can still fire, the gun is considered restricted. So Adriel just pulled up something very swanky off his wall. Yeah, this is uh, this is my straight pull SBI, and it's twenty six and a half inches full. Mm. <laughs> all the way from yeah. tip of the barrel to back of the stock. So this one's non restricted, even yes. though it's very small. Now, if I opted for a fixed stock, I could have gone with the shortest barrel ever because it wouldn't be designed to fold down or telescope down or anything like that. That's why that, what is it? The, uh, oh, what's the shotgun? The 312? SS211. SS211. Yeah, it's 23 inches, I think. There's a 23-inch version it's right or, now. Or the, the mare's legs are the ones that people might know a little bit mm -hmm. better. It mare's is a legs are also quite short. That is clearly not a handgun, so that doesn't fall into that mm -hmm. classification because of that. And by the way, the definition of a handgun, you're going to love this, is just... A firearm that is designed or adapted to be fired with one hand. I That's fire cool. most of my handguns with two hands. I, I know, but you can fire with one. <laughs> that one, maybe not so much, but the handguns, yes. So if it's not designed. a firearm, it can be designed or adapted to be fired with one hand. And it's not semi-automatic because then that entire first rule doesn't matter. And it is just under 26 inches. It is not more than 26 inches. And then gets shorter than 26. If it is just a gun that is less than 26, then it is technically just going to fall into a non restricted category. Okay. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to design such a short gun that can telescope that'll be restricted. I haven't seen any. Have you seen any? Okay. You have. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about what I just pulled up on screen in a minute. But, um, yeah, so what does that even look like? If you want something to look at, I'm holding up a shotgun right now. And this shotgun is pretty unique in that it looks like it's more than 26 inches. I know because I have a measuring tape right over here. So let's pull out the measuring tape. Let's get 26 inches out here. Okay, we have 26 inches. Well, it's upside down, but whatever. Okay, so the gun looks like it's more than 26 inches, right, kids? Yeah, it's more than 26 inches. So why is this a special gun? Well, if this was short enough and the stock full, I mean, collapsed and it was less than 26 inches, then, oh, it would be restricted. But it's actually still more than 26 inches. So what's the deal with this thing? It's here. Ta-da! So now uh -oh. I have a pop-action shotgun, so that wouldn't be something that you care about for the... Uh, barrel length rule that is a 14 uh, no 12 and a half inch barrel it's just a remington 870 clone but the stock folds and now it is sitting at a lovely 23 inches in overall length so this is a restricted shotgun okay i made this for my restricted pal courses so that i could show students look this is the thing and if you start swapping parts without thinking about it you can make yourself a restricted gun that has not been registered and they really don't like you to have that okay so that got me started down the rabbit hole of registering a restricted fire okay 
this was about four years ago that I did this for the very first time. Um, and I knew that this was a thing, but I've never tried it. So I called the RCMP and asked, and then they put me in through to the Ottawa Firearms Lab. And I talked to a tech there, and they said, yes, you can do this. You can send us pictures of the thing, and we will the process. Uh, we will begin the process of registering the gun. Okay, that is, I need pictures of the entire gun, on both sides. I need pictures of every single uh, stamping on the gun, especially caliber. And then, what the most important thing was, seemingly, is take a tape measure, stick it right next to the gun, showing how long the barrel length is. And with those bits of information, what they do is that the tech goes and figures out the um, what the FRT, the firearms reference, firearms reference table number for that gun is. If there is already one on the FRT table, a sub a FRT number specifically for that firearm and that configuration would be non-restricted, restricted, or prohibited. Then it's pretty simple. They just go, okay, it's this gun. We're going to give you this number, and you can take that and my verifier number, and I'll explain what a verifier is later, and you can start the process of registering the gun. You go to the RCMP individual web services. It is in the system now. After some time, some government you know, things happen, and then they send you a registration certificate okay and that's what i did with that shotgun okay that process took several months <laughs> because after that initial contact with the tech uh i got the pictures sent to them and then radio silence it took me about two months of sending emails to finally get no response at all get frustrated and call them when I got put through the two to the firearms lab again, <laughs> I finally spoke with another tech and it goes, oh, yeah, the person in charge of your file went on vacation. But uh, let me take a look. Yeah, it's all good to go. Let me just sign off on it. That was a lot of fun. Cool. So um, you mentioned verifier. So process is so like uh, I'm, I'm going through this process. Uh, you're going through this process, right? Uh, one of the, one of the steps in it was, uh, build your restricted firearm. So I did that. I built it. Uh, and then the next step was get a verifier to, oh, verify it really. Right. Verify that it's what it's supposed to be. And it's that kind of firearm. Uh, my FRT. So there is an FRT entry for the Raven. There was not an entry for the FRT for the Raven at a 16 inch barrel because no one's that dumb except for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it's so close to 18 inches, right? What's the point, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so I, I got the uh, I got the sub number, and then the next thing was I applied. So I gave you some photos of it, mm -hmm. um, and then separately the RCMP tech asked for some photos of it as well. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm still waiting. I'm I'm a month in right now, and I'm waiting. But yeah. I'm gonna call them. You mentioned because yeah, it's got to be done. I just need that. It's got to be done. Yeah, it's, it's been a month, so it's probably mm -hmm. just sitting on somebody's desk. Yeah, so um, that brings up a, a question on my end because I remember when we were dealing with uh, well, stuff. So, so you, okay, you changed the barrel length or whatever. You have thirty days. Okay, you changed that barrel length. That receiver was set was sold as non restricted, and then you put a restricted. Mm -hmm. It's sitting there built, and you're at your thirty days. So, it, what, oh yeah. So that, that, well, that is that, that's what I'm so getting that's, to. Is that just hey, so that's you started the process, thing. you let them know that thing is completely separate. My understanding of it is I would have to talk to Ian Runkle, the firearms lawyer, to get this precisely uh, correct. But you know, you can always just double check with him next time you have him on. Is that 30 days thing? It's just a modification of a firearm that was already registered. Okay, so if mm -hmm. you had an AR. No. Yes, you could swap out the uppers and play, and you had 30 days to update 
the registration certificate to show the correct barrel length. Same right. thing with a strip lower. You've got 30 days to tell them this is now a gun, not just a restricted strip frame. Okay. And then on that, though, wasn't it when the 80s, before they were just uh, mm. illegal paperweights, you had to get your serial number and all that documentation in when you were intending to actually mail it out. You didn't build it. You went through the paperwork saying, I am intending on building this. Send me my paperwork so I can actually do it so I'm not in possession of a prohibited device. It, it seems weird that it that with this process, it's you build this restricted firearm, then send it away for, for verification. That See where I'm going with that? Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's just the, the, the point of the whole thing is I think there's Look, a lot of room you to get started the in, process. If somebody asks, where's the registration certificate for that shotgun? That looks too short. And I can tell them I don't have it, but I can show you all the documentation and I can put you into the RCMP's database. And it will say that I have initiated the process of registering this shotgun as a restricted fire. And mm -hmm. hopefully the person didn't get into a fight with their wife that morning or had their large coffee enema. And then they actually, you know, treat you well. Yeah, it sounds like the up, the process needs to be updated because that's it's been a lot of liability on somebody to have them build it first and there's no register and just bank on the fact that, hey, the raids happen. But you, you need the yeah. photos to send to them. You can't just yeah. send them a photo of an upper and lower and be like, I'm going to make this thing 16 inches because it's not good enough, right? Right. Fair enough. Yeah. With this one, I actually, um, or I'm holding out for the listeners, says I'm holding out... If you know what a Servo Super Shorty is, this is the Servo Super Super Shorty at home. Uh, this is just a Grizzly uh, pump action 12 gauge Remington 870 clone. So if you were a fan of Canada ammo back in the day, these things came in. This is the eight and a half inch barrel model. And um, it is not correct to the Servos because I think the Servos actually had six inch barrels, but it's close enough. Um, this had initially a non-folding, non-pistol grip, full rifle type stock on it, and it was more than 26 inches. But I've always wanted a Serbu Super Shorty because it was my favorite sidearm in Battlefield 4. So I was like, yeah, let's go. Okay. So um, I got myself one of these things, and for the longest time, I had put together all the parts to assemble it into a restricted shotgun. And I just hadn't done it because I just didn't. Didn't feel like taking the plunge. Then Adriel calls me one day and says, I'm going to build a 16-inch Raven. And just as you pointed out, why? <laughs> yeah, it's so close to 18 and a half. But we went through the entire process, and after we were done, I just realized I had to do it. I just, just take the pictures. It wasn't that bad, right? Yeah, take the pictures, yeah. send them in. I mean, the, the benefit of it is I am a verifier, so I can just skip that entire step of like, well, well, what gun is it? Because that's all the verifier is. It, it, you have to be sponsored by, by a firearms business for you to apply to join the course. It's an online course. You go through the entire course, and they teach you how to figure out if a gun is a gun and what type of gun is it. And then you get a verifier number, and that's one of the – uh, things that you need to provide when you're actually registering a firearm as restricted. So that saves me a step. Adriel had to go through the problems of sending me pictures, and I had to be very specific about that picture where the barrel is shown next to a measuring tape. I've got it's got to be lined up. I gotta know how long that barrel is because it's part of the entire process. But yeah, so I I just did it. I I sent it in. I have it in the systems and I have it put together because I, I want to take this trap shooting because I think that'd be fun. <laughs> Is that one? I, I not want video of that. <laughs> hmm? Dave, the one you've got right now, it, that one isn't designed to be folded or telescoped down. Correct. That's non-restricted then, right? And then we were just talking about this actually before the, the show, uh, the servo super shorties, should have been non-restricted coming in. And mm -hmm. if somebody entrepreneurial is out there, I think you can make the argument that if you manufacture something like this from the get-go and bring it into the Canadian market, I would sign off on that as being non-restricted as a verifier. Okay? 
because it's not it to be fired with one hand, right? No, no, no. I would, I, I would absolutely never try to fire this thing one handed. Okay, it's got a three inch chamber. Hey, make it a three and a half inch chamber just to make sure somebody out there can't say that it's definitely not supposed to be shot mm-hmm. by with two hands. You can shoot that one handed. Um, because if you put a three and a half inch slug on this thing, which I think I made it, it's like four, maybe five and a half pounds. <laughs> well, yeah, why that. not? <laughs> there, there are people I mean, out there I'm who gonna try, try it. it, and I'm gonna get video of it. Duh, that's what's got a dot on it, right? How am I gonna aim this thing? <laughs> <laughs> You're saying, Kyle? Hmm? You're saying something? Yeah, and he agreed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are gonna do it. Like, absolutely, make that thing three and a half inch chamber. Because I want to see the videos of all the broken wrists. <laughs> Bring some light speed. You guys probably saw the mo- the most recent video of the guy shooting something like that, catching it right in his teeth and having a circle bro- of broken teeth right here. Oh, nice! Yeah. I did not oh, see yeah, that. Caught one. it right in the face. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, why not? They make forty five seventy revolvers, which are fun to shoot. Yeah. Why not three? And bring a half in some of the light shirty. speed, uh, or, or I guess you might have to manufacture them. Manufacture some three and a half inch stanky slugs because light yeah. speed doesn't make those commanders anymore, right? Well, you find a uh, someone who has a reloading press and you just make your own. That's true. Or uh, and then you can make it still Sammy spec, but above what you're going to buy in a store. Yeah the um, the, uh, <laughs> the 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 firearm is not a handgun. The firearm is not designed or adapted to be folded or telescope or otherwise reduced to be less than 26 inches. And it is not name restricted by name. So if if somebody makes this but new, then it would be non-restricted in my opinion. The reason that this one is restricted is because this came into Canada with a stock and I swapped out the stock. Now this is a restricted firearm because it was designed or adapted to be shot under 26 inches when reduced in length. And this was reduced in length. So that's it. Okay. Mm. Uh, we got a question here from Sporting Rifle. It says, uh, oh, oh, I'll right. stop it. <laughs> <laughs> when you have a restricted long gun, red shirt so shows barrel length, and you have many barrels with different lengths, do you need a separate red shirt for each option? I actually have a, almost an answer for this. Okay. Because I happen to be an avid, I mean, burgeoning but i'm an avid collector of the thompson center contender so if you know what the thompson center contender is it's a break action handgun and its call of fame was being featured in uh hard target to kill i think it was a john claude van damme movie where the bad guy that's what he's got he's got a break action handgun it looks like it's a 308 or something and that's what he shoots at the bad guy the good guys with okay but yeah it's just a break action handgun and there's a myriad of barrels for those things, okay? Anywhere from 22 long rifle up to my 4570, okay? And if I remember correctly, in the FRT for that, there is a separate entry for each barrel available for the contender. And it's hilarious. Like, it's like every single 22, 22 Magnum, the 17 caliber rim fires. Then you get to center fire stuff. Everything under the sun that is a pistol caliber, and then you start moving into some rifle calibers, and of course, 410. Okay, so I have seen the FRT for that. It is possible that you may end up literally with a registration certificate for each of them, but I can't be sure. Your well, best bet would just to have a register restricted frame. In theory, wouldn't that fall under what we were talking about before with you have the 30 days to let them know so you could throw, hey, I throw that upper on, go shoot it. Eh, okay, go put the original upper that your red shirt shows or if you were lucky enough to have a a, a lower only red shirt. Potentially. And and take it off. Yeah. You have 30 days to let them know. In theory, now this is obviously not legal advice, but in theory, yeah. Yeah. you have 30 days to take it off and restart the clock. Yeah. What I was talking about there is, remember the AR-15? Ah, the golden days? 
when those were restricted because they were restricted, then it didn't matter what barrel length you had on them. So people had like Adriel's seven inch blaster, which I still am jealous of that. I miss that gun. Every time you bring it up, it's like, fuck, that thing was, I mean, sorry, sorry. That thing is just so good. Uh, all the way up to your 16 or 24 inch barrels, whatever. So the registration certificate usually comes attached or has included in it a, uh, a barrel length for mm -hmm. the restricted fire. That is a registered certificate for that specific gun with that barrel length. So if you had other uppers and you wanted to, you can, as, as an AR-15 is, pop two pins out, take the bolt carrier and the charging handle out, or maybe you have the money and just have a charging handle in all your uppers, and then just pop the bolt carrier out. Or maybe you have bolt carriers in all your uppers. Who knows? Just dedicated upper, pop the pins, put a new dedicated upper up there, and you're good to go. But that is not the barrel link that matches the registration certificate. So they gave you 30 days to update them. But if you theoretically just used it at the range like that, put it back together, and then you went home with the gun in its original registration certificate outline configuration, would that be fine? I think Ian's got a video on this, but you know, you'd have to go back through her through his backlog. But yeah, yeah, because yeah, you can get the uh, oh, what's that uh, Polish Uzi there? The BRS ninety nine. You can get that oh, yeah. BR ninety nine BRS. One of the no, two. It's B, I think it's BR ninety nine. BR ninety nine. You can get it with a long barrel or a short barrel, restricted or yeah. non restricted, and it's very quick to swap. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's if it's anything like the Uzi, it's just like the collar at the front, and whoop, and then put a new one in, tighten the collar, mm -hmm. go off to the races. Indeed. And then uh, Rico says, being a verifier is a little more complex than that. I'm sure Dave's just simplifying it just to make it easy. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, I can talk about how you verify a revolver versus verifying a semi-automatic handgun because it's terrifyingly silly, the nuance there. Yeah. Yeah, you just replace it. But you're right. It's not terribly difficult. You don't have to be a gunsmith to, to get the cert. No, but. no. I, I, my, my, my interest was purely... I I just I, I want to have all the gun things related. Like my next step basically after becoming a verifier would just get to be a firearms license or a firearms business license. Sorry, I have a firearms license. <laughs> the uh the business license, which would then let me like sell, buy, assemble firearms and you know come up with new stuff. Well, that would be There's a manufacturer. that would that wouldn't be just the firearms business, that would be your manufacturer license. Oh no, that so the so the application for this, I looked at it a couple of years ago. Like you could just get so many things under that umbrella of a business mm -hmm. license. It, right. It's the ammunition stuff. It's uh, museums and the allowances that allow you to have even up to prohibited firearms. Mm -hmm. Then there is all the armor stuff for movies as well. Yeah. And ma and then obviously the the one that would be nice to have just to have is manufacturing license because when they took that away a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't know if if maybe some new listeners out there didn't know. You used to be used to be able to be able to make whatever gun you wanted as long as you had a license for that type of firearm. So if you wanted, you could make yourself a pipe shotgun. I mean, it'd be a pretty or terrible thing. Three D print an AR fifteen, or three D print an AR fifteen, or or, or I heck, even just... those words. Well, we're we're gonna get so our yeah. Facebook feed banned just for me yeah. saying those words. So that's, no. not say, that's not very hard to get either. I'm wondering if he's talked about the manufacturers. I know I was looking at that when I still lived in Canada. I was kind of looking at that and then kind of threw that on the back burner because it seemed like they 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 basically wanted you to be a journeyman machinist in order to yeah. to give that. Because the, the way I was looking at it, like it, they didn't outright say it. It's either like machining experience or studied under someone who already had that uh, that license. Basically, so, like the way I read it was me going into it as an electrician. I wasn't going to get it because I was just doing hobby job stuff at home. Yeah, the the, the, the my understanding on the matter. I guess I'm not a I'm not an expert. You'd have to talk to uh to Parat Logan. The uh, uh, have you had him the the M1 Garand guy? You're muted, Adriel. I said, yeah, I should have him on. He's uh, uh, he's great at grands, and he knows he knows quite a bit. He's, he's got all that stuff in there, there right? Uh, yeah. So, just applying. One of the I'll tell you what the requirements are to apply to get a firearms business license. Um, fill out the application. Literally, throw a bunch of money at the government. You can apply for all the privileges you want, 
and then they can come back and say, great, let's look at your storage. That's mm -hmm. the big thing. Yeah. If you have personal firearms, they cannot be with the business firearms. They have to be separate. So they have that to have their own makes state. sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, you need to have a home security or a security system in place on the premises where the business firearms are kept, okay? Or you can exceed the storage requirements and then you don't need a security system. So my reading of that is if you have a bunker, <laughs> you're good to go. Okay. You have Probably a cheaper to get the security system. <laughs> but then you can't say you have a bunker. Well, yes, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or if Adriel decides to do it, I mean, that gun room is a pretty sturdy gun room. So does that exceed a home security system? I mean, maybe. I think they'd probably argue you need to change his door. You're muted. You're muted again, again. Adriel. <laughs> I said I'll I'll put some shotgun booby traps around the doors. There, it's it exceeds there a home alarm. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> just just take take a dead dog, stuff it full of terrorite, and leave it by your front door with a with a one of those like fake uh, dog like motion activated sound noise machines. So when they burst through the door, you know. <laughs> maybe maybe another voice voice line princess no not again <laughs> <laughs> and demonetize anyway yeah. uh back to becoming a verifier you said you had to be sponsored by a business now especially after all this last talk it's got to be obviously a firearms business is there any other special requirements of the business sponsoring you to do that no, it took a while for me to figure out where I could get that sponsorship from. And then I had a Eureka moment. I'm a member at like four different ranges. One of them must be looking to have this as an option. And so uh, Buffalo Target Shooters decided that they would be the ones to sponsor me for this. And so I am the verifier for that range. And if any Buffalo Target Shooter Association uh, members would like, they can reach out to me to ver do verification stuff. Now, hmm. this is the kind of funky part as part of the agreement that you signed to become a verifier you are not allowed to receive compensation for the services provided so i can't ask money for doing verifier stuff um okay and that's the thing that they say and that they put in the contract so well yeah um, that would discourage people from getting it done yeah yeah so Maybe. if um yeah if somebody ever needs that kind of stuff I think they can provide my name. Like I'm pretty sure maybe the RCMP would like reach out to me and ask, "Hey, can you help out here?" But uh, if if they are, mm -hmm. if they want to, they can do that, and then I can go and take a look at whatever it is. And I actually have a situation where a verifier was required for a firearms purchase transaction that I did once. Hmm. That's interesting that the range was able to sponsor you for that. Cool. Yeah. Maybe I should ask one of my ranges. Yeah. You should. Chas would do it. Yeah. 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 That'd be cool. And yeah. then we can uh, get shorty shotguns and uh, <laughs> and then we can fire these out of them. The oh, there you oh, go. 600, 600 grains. grains. <laughs> 1900 Whoa. FPS with 600 Whoa. grains. Whoa. <laughs> nice. Look at the energy here. 4759 4750 foot pounds at the muzzle. Oh, that's yeah, but five pound but now you got to look at the how fast that drops. It's 1300 foot pounds at 175 yards. Yeah, that's that's well, you know when when, it, when you're when you're shaped like a fridge and are approximately a tenth of the size. It loses yeah. 3400 foot pounds in 175 yards. Yeah, that's got to be tough on that. But you yeah, want to get that up big chunk of lead flying through the air well you know Bounce what's funny eight. it's like you don't even need that much because like uh, i found some i think it's score score sells some high velocity slugs that are an ounce and an eighth and that are doing like 1600 feet per second oh, it's like spicy it's like like you shoot it you're like oh okay yeah this is not low recoil yeah. stuff oh yeah no yeah that four i've 
done that where the low recoil stuff wasn't available so end up picking up like like two and three quarter inch one ounce slugs doing 15 1600 feet per second and it like they're not pleasant no they're not (laughs) especially when you're used to shooting like light stuff at speed and then you go try and shoot one of those slugs yeah not pleasant (laughs) but i do like the noise yeah there it is that's the box i gave you it's at 1550 fps pretty stank i mean they're not horrible but when you're used to low recoil stuff (laughs) yeah so so um adrian here's a question for you just just before uh I, i can stop talking about this should i run this as a handgun or as a shotgun in three gun I would not run that. Well, <laughs> run that as a shotgun and, and three gun, and I want video because that is just, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be an exercise in frustration. Does that have a choke on it? No. Oh, cool. No. Like they choke that short of a barrel. <laughs> no, but you know what's what's goofy? Well, you can go Some buy of a these tap did and come into the country with a choke. Yeah, you can buy the taps from Brownells and choke them. Yeah, but then like I, I'd have to find the right size, and it'd probably be a thin wall choke, and blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it would be. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't feel like it. I, I think it's just funnier this way because it is way funnier. Indeed, this it way. is. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for letting us know about the wild and wonderful process to registering restricted firearms. I mean, we talked about registering something that you build. Um, in the past, when handguns were a thing, if you found a handgun, then you could register it through the same process and keep it. But yeah, I don't. If you fa- you wouldn't get to keep it these days. Yeah, you can't. If you found so a handgun, only, and went to it. Yeah, yeah. Nothing with handguns is allowed. So no transfer of handguns, no inheriting of handguns, no importation of handguns. Except, oh, you're gonna like this. Actually, this is actually kind of real. No finders keepers. No finders keepers, <laughs> but you can still borrow them. And I have been testing how long I can get away with that. So Mm -hmm. I started out with the two weeks. That was approved. Then I did a month. That was approved. I now have another data point. They have approved the borrowing of a handgun for six months. Oh, I thought you were going to go full. Yeah, like after that, after a month, just go right for the year. Five, no, like I, five years. <laughs> I have to. I, I have to be. I have to be incremental. It can't just be balls out to the wall. Uh, you know, because because then because they start saying, Ontario C- CFO is issuing ATF up to a year. Must be ATT. ATT up ATT. to a year. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. We have more data points. Someone that was it last week. Someone yeah. was saying Ontario was like every time they had to do it. So, what like, mean? I mean, it's cool to hear that Ontario is doing up to a year. I think we had a comment on the show when we were talking about borrowing before. There were, but hmm. no. Rico's saying sure. Ontario CFO ATT up to a year. Yep, perfect. I would okay. be curious to find out. Okay, what's their? What's the other person's license uh, expiry? And then going for that date. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That might be it. Well, I mean, I mean, it's not related because it's not everybody. But I have made a long-term ATT for instructors. Because uh, all my instructors that help me to teach the course, mm-hmm. they can borrow my handguns for free, so they don't have to pay a he had fifteen bucks or twenty five bucks or whatever yep. it is to borrow a kit, uh, and they have it for the duration of their license. So some people have it for a couple the, of years. The last one. So actually, speaking of firearms instructors, uh, my neighbor did his. They put his guns on the registration for, on that one. I did mine. They didn't. They just said see conditions, and the conditions were. This guy can borrow handgun, can take handguns for being a uh, instructor, and no registration numbers associated with it at yes, all. Yes, no, I actually so you you're right. Just, that just happened to me as well because I just so you can just borrow anything without a call or anything. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's yeah. anything that the that the other instructor has that is registered to them, and it was actually kind of funny. They actually threw in a regular ATT as well, so I can borrow any of wow. his guns and use them for competition. Nice. And he's got a CZTS2. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Dude, that thing is Even stupid. more Gucci. Hey, that yeah. thing is so stupid. I love it. I love it. No, man. the parrot's stupid. The TS is like a step up to stupid. Yeah, the oh. TS, yeah. It's yeah. They're nice looking. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're it's a very really nice cool. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for letting us know about that. Why don't we no uh 
head on to the rest of the show. Okay. Have a good day. And thank you, Dave, for coming on and uh, discussing the verification process, how to become a verifier, and what, well, kind of what you got to go through to register a firearm from non-restricted. We'll get on to listener feedback. And we got uh, Tony like sent an email all the comments, in. right? Mm, yeah, I think Rico we yeah, said, we... if you're ever in Ontario, check out Arcane Defense. That's him. Tony was saying use CFE BLK for the 300 blackout. I think that that uh, Lil Gun burns quick because they use that in like 44 mag and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, you need a fast burning powder for that. Yeah, that shorty for that 10 inch barrel. <laughs> Yeah. I think I I think I got it right because there's no big like I didn't feel the heat of a fireball going around my hand and I would have <laughs> where, where my hand was <laughs> yeah. I would have okay uh do you want to take on uh, Tony's email sure yeah good evening Slamfire Radio it'll be a long one today so be prepared the CCFR AGM was a great success in Calgary. Uh, Kelly actually recognized me first while I was signing in at the AGM table. Didn't get to catch up with her in the morning, but I did return for the banquet and live auction in the evening. It's actually a funny story. I went to the banquet with one of my colleagues, and I did not know he was a gun owner for the longest time until I saw his phone one day with the CCFR sticker on the back. Shout out to Ernesto. After that secret handshake, there was quite a bit more to talk about during off hours. Before the banquet, uh, the Kellys sold him a winning ticket, a raffle ticket for two old muzzle loaders. One of them, a Thompson Center 50 cal. The other, not as clearly marked. Uh, it was also my first time attending a live auction. Alberta F Field Coordinator Jason did a fantastic job. He is a professional, after all. Unfortunately, most of the items are out of my price range. National Range Day and Open House at the BTSA was a great success as well. I was on the IDPA bay for the day, despite never having shot IDPA before. And to be honest, I'm just not a good instructor at all. I did get my chance to uh, try my hands out on one of the stage guns, the P320 X5 Legion. And Ooh. truth be told, I did not buy into the SIG hype. Really? The dropping discharge issue and the saying of, you are buying an American striker pistol from a company known for European DASA hammer pistols was always win in my mind. But I loved it. That P320 was topped by a Vortex Venom Red Dot and it presented very naturally for me. I don't think it is a 1911 grip angle either. Considering its flexibility is an FCU pistol, Magpul now makes magazines for the P320. I think this would be a, a new addition to my pistol thaw shopping list. Now calculating financial feasibility. <laughs> Good night. Best regards, Tony of Calgary. Yeah, yeah no, the P320 X5, that is, that is a nice pistol. It's got a good trigger pull on it. Yeah. Yeah. I do like the X5. I don't like well, the... The X5, the other one? I don't like the whole the geometry of the whole pistol from just a standard 320. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I didn't really yeah. like the 320. It felt really top heavy, but the X5, it they changed the grip and everything. And it's yeah, it feels It's a gamer good. gun. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 way more of a gamer gun. And the, the 226 Legion, I've shot one of those, and that just felt like... A waste of money to me it like very the like, trigger was great on it the 226 yeah. legion but it, it was too too expensive too expensive yeah, i didn't uh, get to shoot the 226 legion i held the 226 legion and i got the 226 mm -hmm. scorpion so it's already got their short reset elite mm -hmm. trigger and the legion it it felt like it was just different styling furniture for me or no yeah. the legion was single action only though wasn't it and the trigger's very light on it. But okay. I didn't I know, it's been a while, so I can't even remember when I held that. But uh, yeah, the single action only would have been nice, but yeah. Yeah. But okay. if you get a single action only, you can get a hammer fired gun that is like has a lower bore axis on it, like a nineteen eleven or something like that. If you're gonna go single action. Yeah. Or a twenty eleven for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for Tony for your email. We'll get on to the YouTube comments, and we have Tony and Eddie in the YouTube comments. So, uh, from Tony, pro tip if your PAL is expiring but not expired, go for our PAL and renew for 50% off from the RCMP. Fee for upgrading privileges is set as 50% of the higher fee. That is 
a really good tip because good you you get renewed when you upgrade. Uh, Tony says the value of an FCU pistol in Canada today much less chance of breaking. So FCU fire control unit. Yeah, uh, plastic frame and plastic yeah. blower and, and well and the, yeah the the firing control is the serialized part not the frame of yeah. the gun. Yeah. Uh, he says, oof, Edson to Drayton, might as well drive to Chaz. And actually, Crystal and I were talking about that after the show, and it's pretty much the same distance. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I don't know. I don't know Edmund or Alberta geography well, that you, well, though. <laughs> <laughs> like Drayton, you still have to go a fair bit south from Entwistle. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, like going to Chaz, which is just, well, 10 minutes south of Highway 16 from the 43 turnoff. So, yeah, it's pretty much the same as Drayton, I think. But, yeah, it's still not far. Like, <laughs> still not far. Then uh, Eddie says, you can, oh, and all of these are on last week's episode. He says, you can still buy pistols under nar a narrow provision for Olympic disciplines. I've heard if you join the ISSF, provincial sanctioning body and or the national body the shooting federation of canada sfc you can get an exemption letter that allows you to purchase a pistol rumor going around locally that somebody got a glock through the exemption uh hmm. huh i would like confirmation on that mm Hmm. Because if so, I think uh, ISSF and the Shooting Federation of Canada membership has just spiked. <laughs> that would be that would be actually be hilarious if that actually happened. Uh, okay, sporting rifle saying permit under ISSF is for twenty two long rifle only. So yeah, you can get a Glock twenty two. So. Or one of these uh, well, Marinko Olympians. The, the Glock. I, I can't remember what Glock designation is their 22 long rifle, but not a Glock that shoots 22, not the Glock 22. I don't know if that would be that good for Olympic style. I don't think anyone training. buying it cares. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but, uh, and then Eddie says, borrowing is a good reason for having an RPAL. I've heard of shooters getting long-term ATT, like for months, to borrow a friend's pistol to practice and shoot competitions. Well, Dave's gotten... Has he gotten the sixth month, or he's now trying for the sixth month? Gotten the sixth month. Gotten the sixth month. Okay. I'll be testing a year soon. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Tony replied to that, but that's... Sink in a month. Field... Or bore off two different friends, and the process is pretty simple. I'm thinking three months is probably not a huge stretch, and apparently, no, it is not a huge stretch because you can get six. So, uh, but that is it for YouTube comments. Uh, I don't, was there anything really notable on uh, Discord this week? Uh, I don't know. I've been like posting, I've been shit posting memes and that kind of thing just to, yeah. just because I want to. Awesome. So if you would post, like I to... post some photos up there too when I was out camping and, and doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, we didn't get the uh, Cabela's stuff done this time again, but if you are shopping at Cabela's or Brownells, go to our website, go to the sidebar, click the link. We'll get a little kickback. Won't cost you anything extra, and we'll get a little kickback from both of those and at some point we will get a list together and we'll we'll share share yeah. some purchases. We should have a good build up of purchases going. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> well we did have some issues for a bit there, so Yeah. Yeah. Uh we would like to thank our supporters on Patreon and Player. And if you'd like to support us on either of those platforms, you can go find us there. And uh if you'd like to send us an email, we'll uh read Send it to slamfireradio at gmail.com and we will read it live on the air. And we'll get into shout outs. Adriel, do you got any shout outs? Nope, not from here today. I don't have any either this week. So 
with that, we will uh, sign off. And actually, we'll do a collective shout out to Dave. Thanks for coming on and talking about those. So shout out to him. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, with that, we're going to sign off. So go join our Discord server. Watch us on Facebook, YouTube, Player. And join the CCFR, and we will see you next week. Good night. Good night, Kelly. So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.